Hey mathematicians, today our lesson is over strip diagrams. Our tech is 4.5a, represent multi-step problems with whole numbers using strip diagrams and equations with a letter standing for the unknown quantity. Let's go ahead and read our learning goal together. Today I am learning how to use strip diagrams so I can estimate and solve real world problems. I'll know I have it when I can determine if the problem requires one or two steps. I can determine if I have a total or I am looking for a total. I can determine if I need to add, subtract, multiply, and or divide. I can draw a strip diagram to model a problem. I can write an equation to solve a problem using a letter for the unknown quantity. Let's go ahead and look at our real world connection to strip diagrams. There are times in life when it's just too difficult to picture something in your head. This might be because there's too much information, too many steps, or maybe you are having difficulty understanding the problem. Knowing how to draw models like strip diagrams can be helpful problem solving tools. Let's look at our vocabulary for this lesson. An expression is a mathematical phrase without an equal sign. An equation is a number sentence that shows two quantities are equal. So for example, eight times four equals 32. So if you'll notice an expression, we don't have that equal sign, but in an equation, we do have an equal sign. A variable is a symbol for a value we don't know yet, usually a letter that represents a numerical value. So our example is five times four equals X, with X being our variable. A strip diagram is a model used to illustrate number relationships. So our lesson today is going to be all about strip diagrams, how to draw and interpret them. So a strip diagram, also known as tape diagrams, bar diagrams, or bar models, are drawings that are used to illustrate number relationships. We're going to be referencing this um, anchor chart today. Um, to help us not only draw, but also interpret strip diagrams. So the first question we're going to ask ourselves is, do we have a total? So in our word problem, we're looking for a total or we already have a total. If we already have a total, this means that we need parts. So then we're going to ask ourselves, do we need equal parts or groups? If we answer no to that, we don't need equal parts or groups. We know we're going to be subtracting. If we answer yes to that, we do need equal parts or groups, we're going to divide. So going back to do I have a total? If I answer no, I don't have a total, my total is missing, I'm looking for a total, it means that we have parts. So then we need to ask ourselves, do we have equal parts or groups? If we don't have equal parts or groups, we're going to be adding. If we do have equal parts or groups, we're going to be multiplying. So let's go ahead and look at some types of strip diagrams. Our first type is our total unknown. This means that we don't know our total. So the example we're given is Lucas has 12 glazed donuts, four chocolate donuts, and eight sprinkle donuts. How many donuts does Lucas have? So in our strip diagram, these bars, this top bar and these bottom bars are equal. Notice that they go the same length, meaning that they are equivalent or equal. So that means that this D up top, which represents donuts, the total number of donuts, has to be equal to all these bars on the bottom. So this 12, 8, and 4, when we combine them, it's going to be equivalent to D. So our equation, we could say, because our parts are unequal, we know we're going to be adding and not multiplying. Our equation would be 12 plus 8 plus four equals D, the total number of donuts. So you may also see strip diagrams represented with a line instead of a bar. It represents the same value. It's just saying that this line holds the same value or is equivalent to this bar. Our next type of strip diagram is difference unknown. So our example reads, Michelle wants roller skates for $78. She has $33 in savings. How much more money does she need? So we're going to let the variable R represent roller skates, which represents the difference or how much money Michelle still needs. So we do have a total in this question. 
she needs, Michelle needs a total of $78 in order to buy her roller skates, but she already has $33. So we need to figure out the difference between 33 and 78 to find out how much money she still needs. So our equation would be 78 minus 33 equals R for roller skates. So again, we may see our bar model represented with a line instead of a bar. It still represents that missing quantity. And our last type of strip diagram is parts unknown. So our example reads, Esther picked 3,510 apples on her farm. She gave away 1,275 apples, sold 1,180 apples, and kept the rest. How many apples did Esther get to keep? So we do have a total in this question. So that means we're going to be looking for a part. So because our parts are not equal, we know we're not going to be dividing. So that means we're going to be subtracting. So we're going to let the variable A represent the apples that Esther kept. So I know because I'm starting with a total, I need to take away these parts in order to find my missing parts. So I'm going to take my total, subtract 1,180, and also subtract 1,275 to get the apples that Esther gets to keep. And again, we see this line that represents the total, all of these boxes combined, and notice that it is the same size or equivalent to the bars beneath. So let's go through and let's do some word problems using this problem solving um, strategy. So our steps for problem solving is going to be to read the problem. We're then going to write an answer sentence. We're going to find out what information we're given in our problem. What do we know? Then we're going to draw a strip diagram or a picture model representing the problem. We'll solve and check our answers. So our first question reads, Alana's family is taking a vacation to Disneyland, 885 miles away. They drive 328 miles on the first day and 285 miles the second day. How many miles do they have left to drive before reaching Disneyland? So our first step is going to be write an answer sentence. So basically this is a response to the question. So if our question is asking how many miles do they have left to drive, we're gonna respond they have this many miles to drive. So even though we don't know the answer yet, we can still respond to the question leaving a blank for the number. So we're going to write, Alana's family has blank miles left to drive. So next we're going to fill out what information do we have. So we know that Disneyland is 885 miles away. This is our total. So this is how much Alana's family has to drive in all. So this is our total. We have some parts. We know that on the first day they drove 328 miles. On the second day they drove 285 miles. What we don't know is how many miles they have left. So that third part is what we're missing. So we can go ahead and draw our strip diagram to represent this information. We know we have a total of 885, so we can put that 885 in our total box. And then we know that on the first day, they drove 328 miles. The second day, they drove 285 miles. And then we can designate a variable to represent the miles they have left. So I'm gonna use M for miles. So this is gonna be my variable to designate how many miles they have left. Okay, so then we're gonna use this strip diagram flow chart to help us write an equation and to check our strip diagram. So first we need to ask, do I have a total? Yes, I have a total. Do I need equal parts or groups? No, I already know that my groups, my parts are not equal. So that means that my last group does not have to be equal. So I'm going to be subtracting. So we can write our equation, our total 885 minus 328 minus 285 equals M. And last we can solve. So we can subtract that 328 from 885 to get a total of 557. Then we can also subtract this 285 from the second day to get a total of 272 miles they have left to drive. We can check our work by adding these three values back together 
and seeing if we get a total of 885. So our next example reads, Harry is taking his five friends to the movies with him. Harry has offered to pay for everyone's tickets, which cost $12 each. How much is Harry going to spend on tickets for him and his friends? So remember this first part, we're basically just um, responding to the question, but we don't have a number value yet. So if the question says, how much is Harry going to spend on tickets for him and his friends, we would respond, Harry is going to spend blank dollars on movie tickets. So for our second box, we're going to fill in the information that we have. We know that Harry and his five friends are going to the movies, so Harry's going to need to purchase six tickets. So this is a part. We also know that each ticket is $12. This is another part. We don't know how much it's going to cost Harry total to spend on all the tickets for everyone. So this question mark, this unknown, is going to be our total. We don't yet know. So for our strip diagram, we know that we have six parts because we have six friends, right? We also know that each part is going to be equal because each ticket costs the same. So in my strip diagram, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six parts, parts with each part having $12 inside. When we combine these parts together, we'll get T, or our total uh, amount of money for tickets. Let's go ahead and look at our strip diagram anchor chart and see if we can figure out our equation. So we first need to ask ourselves, do we have a total? We do not, we don't have a total. So then we need to ask ourselves, do I have equal groups or parts? I do, all of my groups or my parts are equal, so that means I'm going to be multiplying. So for my equation, I can write 12 times six equals T, or the amount of money spent on tickets. And for our last step we can solve, we could either use repeated addition, so we could add 12 six times, or I can use multiplication, 12 times six equals 72. All right, our last example reads, Leanne baked sugar cookies and peanut butter cookies. She baked 36 cookies all together. There were eight more sugar cookies than peanut butter cookies. How many peanut butter cookies did Leanne bake? So our answer, answer sentence is a response to the question. So if our question reads, how many peanut butter cookies did Leanne bake? Our response would be, Leanne baked blank peanut butter cookies. So in our second box, we're going to list the information that we have. So we know that she baked 36 cookies, this is our total. We know that there are eight more sugar than peanut butter, that's a part. And we also know, and we don't know, sorry, excuse me, we don't know how many peanut butter cookies she baked. So that's our second part. So for our strip diagram, we know that she baked sugar and peanut butter cookies, and she baked eight more sugar cookies than peanut butter cookies. And when we combine all of these cookies together, we get a total of 36 cookies. So we're gonna look at our strip diagrams, our uh, anchor chart, and ask ourselves, do we have a total? Yes, we do have a total. So this is going to be two part question, right? I first need to figure out how many cookies she baked without the extra sugar cookies. So I need to take away those extra cookies that she baked. So that means I need to first subtract eight cookies from my total. Then I now have a total of sugar and peanut butter cookies combined. This total when combined is equal, it has equal groups. If you notice that this sugar and this peanut butter, these groups, these boxes are the same size, so they are equivalent. So yes, I have a total. Do I need equal parts or groups? I do, I need two equal groups because I have sugar and peanut butter cookies, two groups of cookies. So if I do need two equal groups, I'm going to be dividing because I need two groups, I'm going to be dividing by two. Then we can solve. We're going to take away those eight extra cookies from our total to get uh, 28 cookies. Then we'll take that 28 cookies, divide it into two groups, leaving us with 14 cookies in each group.